Hi, and welcome. Welcome to show number two. This is a Facebook series on Arizona Vote 2022, Did You Know? And why are we calling it Did You Know? Because there are some changes. Some uh, rules have changed, especially on the early uh, ballot uh, scenarios. So we really want you to be informed. I want to welcome, welcome Gina Roberts from Clean Elections again. Thank you so much, Gina. You uh, join us for the first show. You always are so, uh, you know, willing to uh, join our show. So thank you for that and welcome. Hi, David. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to David, to AARP, and of course to Brendan. And, you know, again, I'm with Clean Elections, and we're very happy to be here to help educate voters on the upcoming elections. So thank you for having me. Perfect. Thank you. And Brendan, Associate State Director for Advocacy, AARP Arizona. Thank you once again, Brendan. Thanks, David. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure, and it's always a pleasure to get to work with Gina as well. She's got such great information. So thank you. Perfect. Here we go. So I would like to just let you know that the topic today is the different elections. And this is very important because it could get confusing. I got confused sometimes. Uh, I get confused because you have federal, state, county, cities, general, midterm, school district, and redistricting, which we'll cover at another time. It is. It is. It could be confusing. Um, so just uh, let, let me review just uh, some some uh, topics, and then we'll come back to this uh, a matter of the different elections. I would like you to uh, know to, to know that uh, we cover on the first show the issue of active early voting lists. There's been some changes. Please review show number one or pause this video and read this uh, information because there is the possibility of being removed from the early voting list. It, uh, it's a process. It's not that simple, but uh, we need to be informed. So please do read these points uh, or watch the show number one where Gina did a great job in covering these points. Uh, then uh, we also gave you on the first show, and we would like to review these are uh, deadlines, right? So to register for a certain, uh, to vote for in a certain election, well, that you have to meet that deadline. And then to uh, to vote by mail, there is a deadline. So please, please be, be mindful of those uh, deadlines. And there you go. Uh, uh, pause the video if you need to, but uh, make sure that you uh, uh, are familiar with those dates so that you can vote and uh, not be left out. Uh, we also saw on the first show that uh, this uh, year, 2022, in Arizona, we'll have U.S. Senate, one of two seats, U.S. House, all nine seats, State Senate, all 30 seats, State House, all 60 seats, the, the governor, the executive, state executive seats, including attorney general, secretary of state. All these are going to be voted on this year. So it's not a, uh, it's not that light. It's 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 gonna be a super super important this elections. Uh, and I think Brenda Brendan, you said it that uh, uh, every two years we vote for this kind of elections, and then every four we add the president uh, the election, right? The presidential election. So this is a very uh, very important. Uh, we call this the midterm, right? Yes, this is the midterm elections, and, and during the midterm elections on the federal calendar, we are not voting for our president, but right. for Arizona, we vote for the governor and things like that. So in Perfect. four years from now, we'll vote for the governor again, which will be another midterm election. Perfect. So let's now uh, move on to the independent voter. This would be like the the, inform the main information that we would like to convey in show number two. And I would like to ask Gina, help us understand this matter of the independent voter when it comes to registering, voting in primary in general, whether you can change when or not. Please uh, help us understand this matter of the independent voter, because of, as I understand it, I believe some 30 percent of voters in Arizona are registered independent or, or, or something like that. Take it away. That's that's right, David. We have a very large block of independent voters. So let's start by explaining what is an independent voter. So right now in Arizona, we have three recognized political parties. We have the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and the Libertarian Party. 
So when you register to vote, if you are not registered with one of those three recognized parties, you are considered an independent. So as, as we mentioned right now, Arizona has about 1.4 million independent voters. That's a very big portion of our electorate. Wow. Yeah, that, that's right. And so you know, the rules change when you're an independent on how you can vote in each election. So it's important to talk about when you are an independent voter, you know, what does that mean when you're registering to vote and again, how to vote in those primaries. Um, so when you're registering to vote, your voter registration form is going to have either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party listed as an option or or, or you pick other. Um, and if you pick other, again, that's going to put you in that um, category of being an independent voter. So what does that mean when it's time to vote? Uh, well, as, as we know, August 2nd, we're going to have our primary election this year. Arizona has an open primary. So what that means is that independent voters absolutely can vote. So when we have our primary elections, the purpose of the primary is to nominate. So we're not electing anybody in the primary. We're nominating candidates to advance to the general election ballot. So those nominees are coming from within the political parties. So the Republican Party, they have their ballot that has all of the Republican candidates that are competing against each other to advance to the general election. Same for the Democratic Party. The Democratic ballot has only Democratic candidates on it that are competing for the nomination to go to the general election ballot. So as an independent voter, if you want to participate, you have to select which party ballot you want to vote in. And you can only choose one. We, as Every voter, one vote, one ballot. So you have to choose, do I want to vote in the Republican primary? Do I want to vote in the Democratic primary? As I mentioned, we do have a third recognized party, which is the Libertarian Party. However, they have a closed primary. So independents cannot select a Libertarian ballot. So it's very important that if you are an independent voter here in Arizona, that you understand what the rules are so you know how you can participate. So when we get to the general election, Everybody gets the same ballot. It has those nominees from each party on there. So as an independent voter, you just get the same ballot in the general election as every other voter does. So, Brendan, I, I hope that I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I believe you have done this in your own experience. Uh, you, you were registered for one party and then uh, you registered for the for the other party for whose primaries you wanted to vote or, or, or in uh, whose primaries you wanted to vote. Uh, why would a person do that? I, and I, I also heard that elections are, are won on primaries. I don't understand that concept. Any uh, light on that? Yeah, so I'll start out. So uh, yeah, David, you are certainly outing me as an independent voter here. Um, <laughs> so I have been... Uh, I've been since, I want to say since I was 20, I've been an independent voter in the state of Arizona, uh, choosing which primary I vote in each year. And the way that I make my decision is based on which district I live in. If my district leans one way or the other in a typical way, uh, so if my district, for instance, leans it leans Republican, meaning that mm -hmm. in the history of the, the the seat, it's usually voted, uh, is usually represented by a Republican. I will choose the Republican primary so that way I can pick the candidate that most represents my views. Um, or if I lived in a more Democratic area, then I might pick a Democratic ballot because there might be more Democratic candidates that are vying for that seat. Because if I were to, if I were, if I were registering to vote as a Democrat in a Democratic primary as an independent voter, but Democrats only are running one person in the primary race, then I may not be able to vote and vice versa. So I tend to vote in the, if I live in a in an area that has, whichever party has more candidates to choose, that is usually the party that I will assign myself to as an independent voter in order to vote in the primary election. And I think it's very important that, that independents recognize that they can vote in the primaries for both Republican and Democratic primaries wherever they live. Gina, it looked like you had something that you wanted to bring yes, in there. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I think those are, I think that's a really great point, Brendan, because I think what you're explaining there, how I hear it is you're looking at to see, you know, where are their competitive primaries? You know, is it competitive on the Democratic side or on the Republican side? And I just wanted to, because, um, you know, when we talk about this, sometimes it can get a little confusing. And I just wanted to um, reiterate that for independent voters, when you're voting in the August primary, 
you're selecting that single party ballot based on however you make your decision. Brendan explained how he made his decision, but it is, you do not have to re-register to vote with that party to get that party ballot. So you can remain with your independent status on your voter registration record. You just simply tell the poll worker when you go to vote in person, this is the party ballot I want. And importantly, if you are on the active early voting list or you're you're making a one-time request for a mail ballot, you have to be proactive as an independent voter. You have to contact your county and tell them which party ballot to mail to you. Because when we're on the active early voting list, the county automatically mails out the ballots. But if you're an independent, they don't know which ballot you want. So they cannot automatically mail it to you without you telling them. So since a lot of our voters are vote by mail, it's very important that when you're an independent voter, you're proactive, you know which party primary that you want to vote in, and then you contact your county to tell them which one to send you. Thank okay, you for that let me just ask you know. this question again, because and you don't have to answer it. I, I have heard that elections are won in the primaries. And I don't, is, is that a concept that I, I just don't understand any, sure. anything on that? Gina, do you mind if I take that one? Go for it. So Gina had mentioned uh, when, she, when she rephrased what I said about competitive primaries, she's absolutely right that if a, if a primary is competitive um, in a district or, or, in a, or in a general election or in a, in a statewide election, I should say, um, those primaries are, are, are a lot more um, they, they have either more candidates or they have a couple of candidates that are close in the polls or, or, or whatever the case may be. If, for instance, you live in a really in a really democratic area and there are a number of democratic candidates that are running against each other in the primary, voting in those primaries can help determine which of those candidates run in the general election. There are some elections that have uh, around the state that have no contest when it comes to one party or the other. So, for instance, in a very Democratic area, a Republican candidate may not even run. And so the primary election is, in essence, the general election. And the case is also true even if the even if an opposite party candidate is running, the that the 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 demographics of the of the or the political demographics, I should say, of the of the area are what help determine the race. If you live in a very conservative area, the Democratic Party may nominate somebody to run in the general election, but they end up losing by a significant margin just by the nature of the area. So there's a lot of races that are what you might consider uncompetitive, and the competitive side of those races happen in the primaries. So it is uh, very important, would you say, to vote in uh, as an independent voter, uh, period, right? But, but, but from what I gather, th there could be a strategy based on your values and who you want the candidate or who, how you, who you want to represent you, uh, that you can vote for the other party that you might not necessarily be a member of, correct? I, I wouldn't. I would hesitate to call it a strategy. Uh, I okay. would just say it's more you're picking somebody who represents your interests. Okay. So that's how that's how I make the decision of which party ballot I'm going to take in the primary election. If there is a competitive race, whichever side of it it, it is, I'll take into consideration the candidates on each side, which and what those candidates represent and how closely they align to my uh, to my values, and I'll also take into consideration the competitiveness of those primary races. Got it. Anything uh, on, on this slide, Gina? Uh, if not, can you say a little something about my.arizona.vote? Sure. So um, if, if you need to update your registration, if you need to get registered in the first place, or if you want to make a change to your political affiliation, uh, or let's say you've moved. You know, I know a lot of people here in Arizona with our real estate market, a lot of folks have been moving lately. Um, any kind of change that impacts your voting registration status, you'll want to make an update. So if you go to my.arizona.vote, that is the Arizona Secretary of State's website, you can get a link to, to um, servicearizona.com, which is the online portal where you can go ahead and either register to vote for the first time or update your registration online, and it just simply takes a matter of minutes. So it's really important that you keep your voter registration up to date. 
Perfect. Let's kind of uh, uh, finish the, the the topic today. So just, to, you know, this is, I think, common knowledge that there's federal elections, state elections, county, cities, general elections, midterms, school districts, and all kinds of elections. I guess my, my question is, unless you want to add anything, how does one keep track of all this as a, as a citizen who, who votes? Yeah, it's, you know, this is why I think voter education is so important because we as voters, we have a lot of work to do, right? When it comes to preparing to vote in an election and, you know, just this list here alone, our ballots can be pretty long sometimes, you know, they can be front and back and sometimes they can even be two pages. Mm -hmm. And so what we're seeing here, um, we have all of these different levels of government is really what we're talking about, right? You have your federal government and, you know, that's again, your Congress, the president, um, our U.S. senators, and those are the folks who are making our federal laws for us that impact the entire country. And then we have our state level here, the state level of government, where again, the leader of our state governor, we have the secretary of state, the attorney general, these are our executive branch here in the state of Arizona. And then of course, our state legislature too then you can just keep drilling down. You can get down to your county government, your county sheriff, your county boards of supervisors, go to the city, city council members. And I think as a voter, it's just important to understand how each of those different levels of government impact you because they are all elected offices and they're all going to be on your ballot. And you know, important decisions, again, are made on every single ballot. So I think having a resource, when we, if you go to azcleanelections.gov, we actually have all of those offices listed out for you. We explain their roles, roles and responsibilities so you can understand what they do. And if you understand what those offices are responsible for, then you're going to better understand how they impact you. So if you're, let's say, you know, you're a, a mom, you've got some little ones and you like to take your kids to the library every day. Well, guess what? Your city council members are the ones who are funding that and making decisions on your library. And so, or maybe your trash and water services, or maybe it's, you know, about election laws or, you know, school funding. So it's, it's as a voter, it's important to understand what each of those levels of government and those particular offices what they're responsible for, because when you get your ballot and it's time to vote, then you have a good understanding of what their jobs are and you understand, you know, what this ballot means to you. And at the end of the day, we want voters you know, to participate. We want to see that participation rate because, again, every, every ballot, important decisions are made that impact you directly. Before we close, uh, do we have any numbers? I mean, how many people vote in Arizona? Just briefly. Sure. Yeah, I, I would love to talk about numbers. Um, so it, you know, actually very exciting. In 2020, we broke records with turnout. So the 2020 general election, our statewide turnout was at 79.9%. We almost hit that 80% mark, but that is the highest that it has been in decades. And that's phenomenal. We want to keep seeing that record, you know, that trend go higher and higher. Um, you know, voters, you know, they had a lot of challenges in 2020, and yet they still turned out uh, at the ballot box. And so that's great. And, you know, when we talk about independent voters, David, I really wanted to mention this. Primary elections always have the lowest turnout rate. Folks turn out for the general election, but, you know, as, as Brendan explained, sometimes elections can be decided in the primary. So we're looking at participation rates, turnout rates in the 30s, 30 percent, 20 percent. And then when we look at of that statewide turnout, the percentage of independent voters is even smaller. I've seen years where we've had a percentage of independent voters be as low as 7 percent, sometimes wow. 15 percent. And mm. so, you know, a lot of education needs to be done so that independent voters, one, know that they have the right to participate in the primary, that they understand how, and then also understanding that connection to their government so that they'll want to participate. So um, again, we want to see that turnout keep going as, as we did in 2020 with those high numbers. So I think, you know, the more we can do to educate our voters, then hopefully we'll see, continue to see uh, great participation rates in, in our midterms. My last question. So once you register to vote, that registration will be good for any level of elections. Am I correct? That is absolutely correct. You only great. need to register once and that covers you for all elections. Cities, school districts, what have you. Any elections happening in Arizona, you will know about it 
because you have registered to vote. You can register to vote online. Uh, again, right. that's servicearizona.com. And actually, a majority of people do register online. Or right. you can print out a paper form, mail it in. Um, but yep, there's just one one voter registration list. So as long as you re get registered to vote, you are then um, eligible to vote in all those local elections that apply to you. Gina Roberts from Clean Elections, thank you so much for helping us do this show. Great information. Thank you. Brendan Blake, Associate State Director for Advocacy, AARP Arizona. Thank you so very much. Thanks, David. Stay tuned. Uh, we will continue with this Facebook series. Uh, we'll uh, do more shows. So stay tuned and see you then. Take care.